So the human body has on average about five liters of blood inside the body. Now that's gonna vary a little bit depending on the size of the person, but let's take five liters. So these five liters of blood, the main purpose of the blood is to transport oxygen from the lungs out to the cells in the rest of the body. Now, the entire body is filled with cells and all those cells need oxygen, especially some of these vital organs such as your brain, your heart, and your kidneys. So we have to make sure we supply blood to these organs to keep these organs alive. If we don't have enough blood in the body, we won't be able to supply that blood to the organs. So that is why massive bleeding is something we need to take control of immediately on any trauma patients. This is vital and very important for us to take care of very early in treatment. Massive hemorrhage and bleeding control needs to be a utmost priority. Ultimately, we're gonna stop that bleeding with a tourniquet or wound packing, such as quick clot and pressure bandages, um, or even just wound packing with regular gauze. But that is gonna be the treatment for that severe bleeding. If it's gonna take some time to be able to access a tourniquet or quick clot or wound pack, we can do a couple things to help slow that bleeding while we are trying to get this equipment, such as tourniquets, ready to go on this patient. So two ways that we can help slow the bleeding. One is direct pressure to the area of injury. So if I am bleeding on my arm, I can take a gloved hand and I can place that directly in the wound and I can put immediate direct pressure right where it's bleeding. Now, you have to be able to see where it's bleeding. If I have a bunch of mangled tissue and you can't tell exactly where that blood is coming from, but that blood is just continually pouring out of this area, I may not be able to apply immediate direct pressure to the artery that's bleeding because I may have a bunch of tissue that I can't see through. In some of those circumstances, you may be able to hit a pressure point and put pressure on the artery at a pressure point to be able to stop that bleeding. Now, a pressure point is where an artery comes close to the surface of the skin to where we can apply pressure to it. Our arteries take the blood from the heart out to the body, and they're pretty well protected by bony structures and large muscle groups, but they have to come close to the surface near joints because they have to go around those bones. So that's why we feel for a pulse in your wrist. That's why you can feel for a pulse in your brachial artery underneath your arm near the armpit area. That's why you can feel for a pulse in your carotid, femoral where your leg comes into your core. So there's several areas that we can feel for pulses, but those are also the pressure points we can use to occlude those arteries if we have bleeding past that point. So we'll run through a couple of pressure points and we'll show you some of these areas that you can use to occlude the arteries and slow that bleeding, buying you a little bit of time to be able to apply the tourniquet and wound pack. Okay, so as we're talking about pressure points in the wrist, um, something to keep in mind, we have two arteries that come from the wrist or the forearm down into the hand. One is gonna be the radial artery that runs right here, and it comes into the hand right here at the base of the thumb. This is normally where we would check a pulse on somebody. Um, we have the ulnar artery that runs more along the bottom, and it comes in on the opposite side of the hand here. So let's say we had a severe bleeding, a amputation to some of the hand. Uh, we had an industrial accident where someone's hand got stuck into something and there's bleeding and we need to secure that quickly. The fastest way to put immediate stop on the bleeding is to put pressure directly on both those arteries and that will stop the blood flow past that point by occluding those arteries. This will buy us a little bit of time so that then we can address the actual bleeding and get this bandaged up properly. To show you where these are, if you follow, there's a little bit, there's a bone right here and there's a little bit of a groove and that radial artery will sit right in there. So um, practice on yourself, practice on somebody else. Use either your first two fingers or your second and third fingers. Don't use your thumb. Your thumb, sometimes you can feel your own heartbeat in your thumb if you're amped up and you have adrenaline pumping, which you probably will if you're treating a uh, severe emergency like this. So check for that pulse, figure out where that pulse is. Do this on different people so you know um, you can quickly go and find that pulse and you know about where that artery is gonna be. On this side, um, do the same thing. You should be able to use one or two fingers, feel for that pulse, and find out exactly where that pulse is. So if you push on either side here, even if I don't know exactly where those arteries are gonna be, if I push about in the general area, that should occlude the artery. Go ahead and squeeze your hand. Squeeze your hand, um, do it one more time real tight. Push all the blood out of those capillaries. You can see the white on his hand here. As I release these arteries now, the blood will start to return back to the capillaries and you get that uh, color back in the hand as the blood comes back through. So I'm occluding the arteries. He's pushing all the blood out of his hand just by squeezing it. And then 
we release those arteries and blood flows back to it. So just a demonstration here to know I've got the occlusion. Something else we can do, um, if I just have one hand quickly and I want to occlude that, I can reach around here, put my thumb here on the radial artery, I put my fingers on the ulnar artery, and I can squeeze tightly and that should occlude the blood flow as well as long as I have good pressure in these areas. So go ahead and squeeze your hand. So he's gonna squeeze his hand. You can see the white here where the um, capillaries have been, uh, had the blood pushed out. I'm gonna release this now and you should see the color come back to the hand as the blood flows restored to the hand. So if someone's hand is stuck in an implement or um, you have a partial amputation or something, we can quickly come up here. We should be able to apply pressure directly to both sides of the wrist, put that pressure on there and that stops the bleeding and buys us some time now to start addressing the actual bleeding with bandaging or quick clot or whatever needs to take place down here. Okay, so as we're talking about pressure points, the next pressure point we're gonna talk about is the brachial artery. So the brachial artery supplies blood to your arms from your core. So it's the primary artery coming out of your core, comes, runs down the inside of your arm here and supplies blood flow to your arm. So if we have an injury to our arm somewhere, we can apply direct pressure to that brachial artery and stop the blood flow in the arm and buy us some time to start putting a tourniquet on or doing some sort of measures to stop that blood flow. Let's talk about where the brachial artery is. So as I put my arm straight out here, um, I've got the bicep on the top of the arm and that brachial artery is gonna run just up underneath it. So as you feel it, you'll feel kind of where there's a break in the bicep. Just up underneath that bicep, you should be able to push your fingers up under the bicep and you should be able to feel a pulse. Okay, so practice that on yourself, practice on someone else. Um, so you get used to where that pulse is. Um, as your arm is just hanging there, you should be able to reach up just below the armpit and you should be able to feel that bounding pulse up underneath there. That's your brachial artery. That's what we're shooting for to occlude and that will stop blood flow to the arm. <clears throat> as I'm feeling here, I'm gonna come right up underneath here. We're gonna come just out past the shoulder here. So the shoulder's gonna stop about here and that's gonna be about where I'm gonna reach for that brachial artery. So I'm gonna reach up underneath there. I can feel for that pulse so I know where it is, but once you know right where it is, you should be able to reach around there and put pressure on it and occlude that brachial artery, stopping blood flow to the rest of the arm. I'm gonna put pressure on this brachial artery. We're gonna bring the hand up here. As that blood flow is now stopped, I can squeeze the blood out of these capillaries. You'll see the white spot there where I push the blood out. I let go here of this pressure point and the blood will start to be restored to the hand. Another thing that we can do as we're occluding this now, um, let's say we have a patient that has severe trauma to the arm. We need to put a tourniquet on, but there's also some other life-threatening issue like let's say it's a car wreck and the car is now on fire and they're inside it. We've got to get them out. Let's say it's a car that's about to fall off a cliff. They've run off the road, severe injury, but this car is about to slide further off. We need to get them out of harm's way. So something we can do is if we come up behind them and we're gonna drag them out of this car or move them away from a hazardous environment, we can reach up under here and we can squeeze and we can tighten down on that brachial artery. We can occlude that brachial artery now as we're now starting to drag and move that victim away um, to a safer area to where we can now put a tourniquet on. So remember, reach for that artery, occlude that artery. You can drag them, move them, do whatever you need, but keep this grip here. Then you can take your tourniquet and go ahead and apply your tourniquet once you're in a safer area. So this, these pressure points just buy you time. Um, this is where the brachial artery is and that will stop blood flow to the rest of the arm and buy you time to put that tourniquet on. Okay, so let's take a look at the femoral artery and the pressure point that we can utilize to stop blood flow to the leg. So if we have a severe bleeding to the leg and we need to apply a tourniquet, the fastest way to put a quick stop on the bleeding while we put the tourniquet on is by putting pressure to the femoral artery. Now the femoral artery um, is what is supplying blood flow to the leg from the core. You're gonna have a femoral artery that runs down for each leg. It's gonna run down about the center of the leg. So if we take this leg straight up here, it's gonna be about in the middle here, right in the crease, between the leg um, and the pelvic area. So if you feel on yourself, you can find about where that femoral artery is. So you're a little more familiar with the location of it. So you know where to put pressure um, if you ever had to do this. So as we approach here, let's say we've got some severe bleeding down here. We're gonna apply a tourniquet. Um, but first thing I can do is I can come up here and I can put my knee directly right in here, right in the crease between the leg and the core. I can put that pressure in here with my knee. It buys me some time now to be able to apply this tourniquet, get the tourniquet put on, placed in the proper area. 
um, and be able to completely occlude the blood flow. Once this tourniquet's in place and I've got it secured, then I can relieve pressure off of here and reassess for the bleeding, but I've bought myself time by using that pressure point on the femoral artery. So um, make sure that you're familiar on yourself with where that femoral artery is so you know about where to shoot for when you're putting pressure with your knee um, to try to occlude that. So what I like about using knees for pressure points is it does free up your hands. You've got both hands now to be able to work with while your knee is providing that pressure.